Lesson 6.3, Number of Equal Groups. Now it's kind of important you saw the two videos before this one for Chapter 6, and they're going to be linked in the description if you need to see them. We can model a division problem to find the number of equal groups by using counters and putting the same amount into each group, then we count the groups. We know to use division to solve a problem if we need to separate an amount to solve it. To multiply to solve a problem, we have problems like Emma has three boxes of candy with six candies in each box. How many does she have in all? How many candies does she have in all? So we need to find a total amount that would tell us to multiply the three times the six or the six times the three. For a division word problem, it says Emma has 18 candies to share with three friends. How many candies do they each get? So this is asking us to separate 18 candies to three friends. So that would be a division problem. We would use division to solve it. We learned in video 6.2 that if we know how many in all there are, and we know that this, how many in all, is split into a certain number of groups. It's telling us there's two. We know we need to have 10 in these two groups. Then we'll be able to find how many in each group. The way we do this is by putting a counter in the first group, then putting a counter in the second group, and we take turns going back and forth until we've used all 10 counters. That's one two, and we keep going back and forth for three and four. Now they each have two. We do five and six. Now we do seven and eight. That's seven. That's eight. And now we need nine and ten. We can see we put five in each group. So we already knew how many there were in all, and we already knew how many equal groups we needed to make. We needed to find how many were going to be in each group. Well, in this video, we know how many are in all, and we know how many are in each group. We just don't know how many pink circles to make. We don't know how many equal groups there's going to be. What we have to do is count five of them and put a circle around them. We have one, two, three, four, five, so I can circle these, and now I've made one group, and I can see there's one, two, three, four, five. I can circle these and make another group. And now I know I have two equal groups. So to find how many in each group, we already know how many there are in all. We know how many groups we're supposed to have. We just need to fill taking turns going back and forth until we've done all 10. To find the number of equal groups, we know how many there are in all, and we know how many there's supposed to be in each group. We just need to count that many and put them into groups. Tala has 12 cups of flour, and one batch of cookies needs three cups of flowers. So how many batches of cookies can she make? We use 12 counters to represent the 12 cups of flour, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 counters for the 12 cups of flour. And we circle the counters so there are three in each circle. That will stand for one batch because we need three cups of flour for each batch of cookies. Then we count how many circles we made. That's one group of three, two groups of three, three groups of three, that's four groups of three. We know we have four groups of three. That means Tala can make four batches of cookies. We made 12 counters for the 12 cups of flowers, and we circled groups of three for the three cups of flowers, flour for each batch. And we found how many batches of cookies she can make. 
How would our drawing change if each batch of cookies needed four cups of flour? Well, if they each need three cups of flour and we've got 12 here, we can make groups of three, can't we? Like we just did. We made four groups of three. That means she can make four batches. But if it took four cups of flour for each batch, we would have to circle groups of four for these 12 counters. We circle four counters to represent the four cups of flour. We have one, two, three groups. That means if she has 12 cups of flour and she needs four cups of flour for each batch of cookies, she can only make three batches. Because she needed more flour for each batch, she made less amount of batches. Tala baked 20 cookies. She wants to put four cookies in each box. How many boxes will she need? So what are important numbers? Our important numbers are that she has 20 cookies and she's going to put four in each box. We need to find how many boxes she will need. So we can draw 20 counters. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we have another 10. 10 plus 10 is 20, isn't it? So we draw 20 counters and we're going to circle them so that we have four to represent the four cookies that would be in each box. Then we can count how many circles we made. So we circle four. Then we circle another four. We do it again and again. We have one last group to circle. There are one, two, three, four, five circles. So there's five groups. That means Tala needs five boxes. Each circle can represent a box. Here we have a table and it's telling us that there are 14 counters. We don't know the number of equal groups, but we know there's supposed to be seven in each group. We need to find this amount to fill in the table. Then it says there's 21 counters. We don't know how many groups and there's seven in that group. So we can circle equal groups to complete the table. We know how many there are in all. For the first one, there's supposed to be 14. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven, and seven is 14, isn't it? So we have seven that we're gonna circle. That's one group of seven, and we do it again. So two sevens, two groups of seven, will be 14 counters with seven in each group. That would be two equal groups. Now we have 21. So we can circle seven for how many in each group. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can do it again for another group. Now we have two groups of seven and we can do it again. We made three equal groups with seven in each group from 21 counters. We circled the equal groups and we completed the table. A bakery has 16 apple pies and 14 pecan pies. If they put 10 pies in each box, how many boxes will they need? Our important numbers are 16 and 14 for the number of pies they have. It's impo also important that they're going to put 10 pies in each box. We need to find how many boxes they're going to need. So the first thing we need to do is find how many in all. We need to total the pies to find how many in all. They have 16 apple and 14 pecan. We add 16 plus 14. In the ones place, 6 plus 4 makes a 10. We regroup the 1 and put the 0 in the ones place. Then we add the tens column. 1, 2, 3 tens. We have 30 pies in all. We need to put 10 in each group because they're going to put 10 pies in each box. So we draw 30 counters 
and we circle groups of 10. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's one group of 10. We circle another group of 10. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we have two groups of 10. And we try to circle another group of 10. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 left. So we can circle all of these as our last group. There are three circles. There are three groups. So the bakery needs three boxes. They had 30 pies in all. They had 10 pies in each group. It made three groups, or they need three boxes. Bob has 18 t-shirts and stacks of six in his drawer. How many stacks of t-shirts are in his drawer? Do you see our important numbers, our important information? He has 18 t-shirts and they're in stacks of six. That means there's six in each stack. We need to find how many stacks there are. We can draw 18 counters to represent the t-shirts and put six in each circle, in each group. Then we need to count how many circles we made, how many groups we made. So we count, count off six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we circle them. That's one group, that would be one stack of six. We do it again, that's two stacks of six, and we see if we have enough counters to do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes we do. As we saw in the previous video, sometimes there could be some left over, some remaining, couldn't there? Or there may not be enough. But this time there were, we made three equal groups of six. There are three groups. There are three stacks of t-shirts in his drawer. Now hopefully you're still working on your multiplication facts because you need to have them completely memorized before fourth grade. You need to know your multiplication facts up to 10 as well as you know one plus one is two. And you should be working and have this three times table added to the ones you should have memorized by now. Lisa has 32 apples. One apple pie needs eight apples. So how many pies will Lisa be able to make? Let's circle our important information. She has 32 apples and one apple pie needs eight apples. We need to find how many pies she can make. So 32 apples, we draw 32 counters. And we're going to put eight counters in each circle. Then we count how many circles we make. Each circle we make is going to represent one pie. So we have one group of eight. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We circle another group of eight. Now we have two groups of eight, we do it again. That's three groups of eight. Do we have enough to make another one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, we do. There are one, two, three, four groups. They're equal groups, they each have eight in them. We have four groups. That means Lisa can make four apple pies. So we learned in our last video, if we need to find how many are in each group, we know how many there are in all, and we know how many groups we have. We just need to find how many are inside each group. So we can make the two groups and take turns putting counters in them until we've used all eight. We go back and forth taking turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we can see that there's going to be four in each group. To find how many equal groups, we know how many there are in all, and we know how many are in each group. We just need to make groups, circles, with that amount in each group. 
there's supposed to be two in each group, we have four groups with two in each group. So you can model separating a number in all by making equal groups. And if you didn't see video 6.2, you really should go back and watch it so that you are learning everything you need to learn. We're going to continue on talking about division and trying to understand it, and I'll see you for the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.